Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ross Simon, and together with uh, Professor Geoffrey Lewis and Dr. Alastair Reid, we'd like to uh, give a short presentation this morning on an exploratory uh, experiment we've done um, in Australia. And essentially, the title is Competing in No Man's Land. Um, and for those who aren't familiar with the, the old English expression, uh, turning a sow's ear into a silk purse, it's taking something of, of low quality and being able to present it and make something of, of higher quality. So to set the scene then, in Australia we have uh, fairly standard grades between grade A through to F, A being the highest grade, F being unfit for production. When you smell it and taste it, 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 it smells mouldy, you, you don't produce it. But just above that is, is E grade wine. And you can see there that E grade wine sells for about $250 to $300 a tonne. And yet, and, and correlated with that is the recommended retail price. You expect to be spending about $5 for a 750 ml bottle, up to $10. The other end of the spectrum, an A-grade wine, you see there anywhere from $3,500 a tonne to $15,000 a tonne, and that's, that's traditionally your Grange uh, fruit. And again, highly correlated with the recommended retail price. You're looking at anywhere between $50 and up to $800 a bottle uh, at, at retail value for, for a bottle of Grange. When you look at grades B through D, though, you actually see this is what we're calling no man's land. You can see that you can... You can produce, you can, be, you can be buying fruit for $2,500 a tonne, you can be putting it in, in expensive oak, you uh, uh, employ uh, expensive winemakers, uh, you, you keep it a maturation for another year, and actually you only end up selling it for around $20. When you look at the D grade wine, you actually start to see what's happening in, in Australia and some of the big companies are actually picking up on this and saying, well, can we not take D grade wine um, and we can, through marketing uh, and a recommended retail price and sending a signal or price signal, we can actually put it up in the same sort of area that the B-grade fruit is selling. And this area, uh, one of the major firms calls this uh, Mastige. Uh, I think they're, they're only really the big ones in the wine industry that uses this term. But Mastige is that area between commercial wine, which is sub $10, and luxury wine, which is, which is above around a $30 to $50 market and above. So around 2% of wine consumers drink A-grade wine, around 90% of consumers drink the, the commercial wine, the E-grade into D-grade, but then we've got this, this air in between which is uh, quite interesting. So we thought we'd set up an experiment just to start to test this. So the question is, can you take uh, D-grade wine and essentially turn it uh, uh, into uh, uh, the B-grade recommended retail price through marketing? So we set up six Australian wines and they're either D or B-grade. South Australian or South Eastern Australian Shiraz, predominantly. We took 80 MBA students over two sittings in, in February and, and, and June this, this year. Um, the recommended retail price was anywhere between $8.99 and $27.99. And uh, we set up three groups. So the wines tasted then, we looked at a, uh, two commercial D-grade wines with a, and they're well-known global brands that, that retailed at $8.99. Wines four and five there are mass, what they call Mastige or B-grade wines that rec uh, recommended retail prices at $23.99, $27.99, that upper end of Mastige before you get into the luxury spectrum. Wine six was, was again another D-grade and we wanted to test the packaging around this specific wine. But the one I'll get you to focus on for this presentation is, is Wine 3, and that was essentially a wine that came out in the last 12 months from a major company. Um, we knew it was D-grade wine, but the recommended retail price was, was firmly in that Mastige uh, area. So we set up uh, three groups then uh, to, to test this, and, and all were to, to have a blind taste, indicate a willingness to pay, and a rating of that wine, and then we collected all that data. Then, in the step two of the experiment, they started to be exposed to different variables. In group A, they weren't given the RRP, so we're taking, removing that price signal away uh, from the consumers. But instead, they saw the brands, some adverts, and, and the packaging associated with the wines. In group B, they only saw the recommended retail price, and so we wanted to test how price signal alone, without packaging and advertising, uh, could communicate the quality, or, or the willingness to pay, rather, of a wine. And in group C, uh, they were exposed to everything, price signal, advertising, branding, uh, and, and packaging. So essentially Group C we wanted to compare against Group A and Group B. So in that first tasting then, uh, this is so they've tasted the wine, they've, they've put a rating and a willingness to pay down. What we see 
um, really rides on the back of other research in this space that says that at, at this bracket uh, of, of quality wine, people really don't know what they're tasting. Are they tasting a D-grade wine? Are they tasting a B-grade wine? Uh, are they tasting in the, uh, a $9 bottle of wine? Are they tasting a $27 uh, bottle of wine? And so this is really that first uh, step in the experiment that, that built on previous research. And you can see there, again, if you look at wine three, um, it's a D-grade wine. Technically, it should be married up with wines one and two and six, um, but it's, it's, it's sometimes beating the B-grade wine. It's, it's uh, sometimes beating uh, the, the, the commercial wines. The results are after then. So group A, so they don't have a price signal. They're not giving the recommended retail price. They're giving just the packaging and advertising. What you see is, is, uh, is the commercial wines uh, drop away. Once they've, once they've tasted it and they see actually it's, it's low quality, um, lightweight glasses become big in, in, in Australia in the last 12 months where they're actually, you, you pick up the bottle and it just feels light and once you, you've emptied it, it, it almost looks clear. Uh, and so that's wineries trying to cut back on, on cost of goods as well as transport and the like. And they're also saying it, it aligns with commercial, uh, the commercial uh, signals or the quality signals we're sending with, with commercial wine. So when you look at the bottle and you look at the cheap label, you go, this is a commercial wine, and therefore that sees their willingness to pay drop significantly. When you look at wines four and five, um, they're still in that mastige space. It's a heavier bottle. It's, it's a nice label. It looks sending uh, signals of, of, of quality. And, and that aligns with the advertising. advertising. We've got some professors to look at it and comment. We won't cover it here, but it's very much that aspirational um, uh, st lifestyle choice that goes with, with these, with these uh, mastige wines. And what we see with wine three is it, it, is it holds its own in that, in that mastige space. It doesn't drop off in the commercial space, despite it being the same D-grade commercial wine. When we look at group B, that, so they didn't see packaging or advertising. They just saw the recommended retail price. So this is just uh, price signals. Again, what we see is it holds its own with uh, uh, it being a quality product. When suddenly they're, they're, they're told that uh, what they initially said was a, a $20 or a $22 bottle of wine is actually retails for $8.99, well, their expectation drops uh, massively. Whereas when they're said, actually, it's a, a $22 bottle of wine, it still hangs around that, that mastige space of, of, of just over $20. And what we see with wines four and five, again, um, a quality wine, so it's still holding its own. So price signal seems to be uh, 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 having some uh, influence here. When we look at Group C and we put all the variables together, it, the same trend exists. So commercial wine drops off, and that it drops off to the uh, to the recommended retail price. So between price signal, packaging, advertising, and even without giving the tagline away, it, it, it tries to pitch. Um, the commercial wine here pitches itself saying, well, we don't have to be expensive. So people think straight away, okay, it's a, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a cheap product. And again, what we see with wine three is that it holds its own in that upper mastige space. And I will say there is a lot more um, um, statistical analysis that, that, that Al Reid's done. This is just a, a snapshot, but it actually does show the same, the same trends. So some of the conclusions we can uh, uh, draw out, um, uh, even given concerns of the, of the um, potential concerns of the small sample size, is we can actually see objective characteristics, whether it's packaging, brand, price, advertising, are actually driving in some way, shape or form the rating and willingness to pay. What this means is that the wines that we tested at least align with their marketing positions. So regardless of the wine quality, whether it's B grade or D grade, you're actually saying if you're going to pitch it at a mastige space, if you're going to say it's $22 and you have the associated quality in the bottle and in the advertising, uh, you can actually sell it uh, for uh, what you'd normally sell it as a B grade fruit. And this has uh, uh, big implications for, for the big companies. And so what we would say is you, you, it looks like you can turn a sow's ear into a silk purse if you look at uh, what's going on with, with wine three there. So the further research that we'd like to do is obviously uh, split out the packaging and advertising. What, what component is advertising and what component is, is packaging itself when it's, when it's sitting in your hand? Um, can you work the other way? Now we know that you, you see good wines be discounted heavily, um, but is this, you know, if you don't get it right, uh, you actually end up having to take B grade fruit and it's actually seen as commercial. Uh, so if that means you've got poor quality ads, poor quality uh, uh, packaging, uh, you can actually take all that time and effort out of the vineyard through the winery 
hits the consumers and, 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 and you lose it there. Um, and what we'd like to also test is, is A-grade fruit. So does a, a consumer that's tasting a, a Penfolds Grange know that it's, he's tasting a Penfolds Grange or is it, could it be B-grade fruit, which has just got good packaging and good marketing behind it? And you see some of the, some of the bigger companies starting to focus on being less agribusiness-led and more marketing-led organisations for, for this exact reason. Uh, and just to, to round off on the presentation then, just leave this thought with you that, that the great wine may be made in the vineyard, but willingness to pay is, is absolutely a function of marketing. Uh, does anyone have any questions?